Hi, the Mud Brooker here. This is a video inspired by Needy. Some years ago, Heather decided she was going to switch over all of her cookware from aluminum and Teflon coated stuff to cast iron. So she came to me for a little bit of advice and I told her what she needed to know and how to get started at using cast iron. And it occurred to me I've never really done an introduction to cast iron type of video for someone who has never used cast iron before. So to that end, I'm going to make this video. Now, if you've never used cast iron before and you decide you want to go out and buy a cast iron pan and give it a try, you might be tempted to go to the dollar store, get the very cheapest pan you can find. I paid, I think, $9 for this at a dollar store. It's made in China. There's nothing necessarily wrong with being made in China, but it's not really a very good pan. It has a very coarse, sandpapery surface on it, and it's not a very good quality. Now, you can use something like this, and they're great for camping because they're cheap, and if you lose it, it's no great loss. But I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, because that very rough, very sandpapery surface can give you problems if you don't know what you're doing yet. The best thing for a beginner in cast iron is a pan made by Lodge. This is a 12 inch lodge skillet. It's uh, on the back it says 10 SK, that's the size number. They come pre-seasoned. This one isn't actually seasoned, it's been stripped off. But they come pre-seasoned and they're pretty much ready to go. They're fairly inexpensive. A 10 inch pan, the next size smaller than this, an 8 SK, will cost about $20, $25 and you can find them almost everywhere. Walmart, Target, Farm and Fleet, Tractor Supply, Fleet Farm, pretty much any place that carries cookware is going to have a display of Lodge cast iron. It's good quality stuff. It has a couple of pros and cons. On the plus side, it, like I said, it's fairly inexpensive. This size will probably cost about 30 bucks, but I recommend you get a 10 inch number 8 size pan for your very first pan to try it out. And that will cost you $20-25. They're good quality, they'll last forever, and they're American made, they're nice solid pans. On the, draw, on the minus side, they're fairly heavy. Most of them have a helper handle, so you can use two hands on them, which is really helpful. And they have a bit of a pebbly texture to them. It's not the really rough, na Oops. It's not the really rough nasty texture like these dirt cheap pans, but a lot of people don't care for it. But it's not going to have really an effect on things sticking or anything like that. What you do is you go down, you buy yourself a 10 inch lodge skillet, take it home, it's ready to use, wash it off, it's pre-seasoned right from the factory, and fry yourself up a batch of fried potatoes. Slice up a raw potato, put a fairly generous amount of oil in the pan. You don't really want to deep fry it, but you want it to come up the sides a bit of the potatoes. Put your potatoes in, brown them up good. When you're done, wipe the pan out. There shouldn't really be anything stuck to it. But wipe the pan out and leave just a very light film of oil on the pan and you're good to go for next time. Once you've gotten a hang of using cast iron and you decide whether you like it or not, the next thing I recommend you get is a Dutch oven. This is actually a, an oval roasting pan, but I suggest you get a Dutch oven and get an enameled one. Enamel on cast iron prevents problems with long cooking acidic foods in them. If you want to make like a braised beef with a wine sauce and you want to simmer it for a long time in the wine sauce, on bare cast iron that will tend to strip away the seasoning that's there and with enamel you won't have that problem. Again, Lodge makes enameled Dutch ovens. There's a lot of other brands out there. They're all pretty good. So you can't really go too far wrong with a nice enameled Dutch oven. And that is your basic setting aside. And that's your basic needs for cast iron cookware. But there are a lot of things out there. There are tons and tons and tons of cast iron products out there. Waffle irons. This is an antique one, but they still make brand new waffle irons. And uh, 
Most of them don't have a ring on the bottom like this one does, but they're made to sit right on the burner of your grill, or your stove rather, or you can use them on a grill or over a campfire for that matter, but they're meant to sit right on the burner and they work just great. Something I recommend once you've gotten past the uh, beginner stage is get a corn stick pan. Pretty much every manufacturer that makes cast iron for the past century has made corn stick pans. They're easy to find, they're not terribly, ex in it, terribly expensive. Lodge still makes them today, brand new, they're about I think $20, $15, I'd have to look and see, but they're not very expensive. Even older vintage ones like this are only 30 bucks or so, 40 Besides making cornbread in the shape of corn cobs, these are fantastic for making hot dog buns. You just, you just pat your dough down into the, into the little compartments there, go over the top of it with a rolling pin, which will slice the dough off nice, peel off your extra dough, let it rise, bake it up, and you're in business. Like I said, fantastic hot dog buns. Something else that's kind of handy is a cast iron muffin tin. This is a nice speckled blue enamel. Most of them are just plain, but they're also a pretty useful thing to have for making muffins. You can bake bread in a Dutch oven, make beautiful round loaves in a cast iron Dutch oven. They're fantastic for that. They also make cast iron loaf pans for making meatloaf or bread or whatever you want to use. But if you don't have one of those, a Dutch oven works great. Or even a skillet. If you want to make a round loaf of bread, you can just bake your bread in a skillet. One thing you do have to watch out for, if you start getting into cast iron, it's endlessly fascinating, to me anyway, and things can start to get out of hand if you're not careful. You end up with more cast iron on your walls, on your floors, just about every available surface you've got covered in cast iron pans. There's more down here even. Got a whole pile of stuff there that I'm working on. Some of these I sell and buy and sell and trade and move around, but a lot of them are keepers. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I've rambled on long enough. A lot of people are getting into cast iron for health reasons because the uh, they're worried about aluminum and worried about nonstick Teflon coating coming off in your food. They're also usable on an open fire. A lot of preppers are getting into it because they're uh, concerned with having a gas stove or a electric stove and if you need to cook outside over a gas burner or an open fire cast iron is the best way to do that. So there's huge interest in it. It's gotten a lot more popular over the last 10 years and the last few years especially. Cast iron has really made a comeback which is nice to see. Thank you much for watching. I hope you appreciate the video and I hope that gave you a little bit of an idea of what you're getting into if you want to start using cast iron cookware. Thanks for watching. Bye.